Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Welcome to another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast, episode 90. Great show always ahead of you. <clears throat> first things first, July 1st, this weekend, Danger Room. That's right, Canada Day with the Cats in Calgary, Alberta at the Comedy Cave. You can come down and, uh, you know, listen to the comedy that is mm, hated by many and loved by few, right? You see those stickers on the back of locally hated and globally loved or whatever the fuck people are putting on the back of their pickups these days. It used to be like the little uh, Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes pissing on a Ford logo, but we've graduated to political statements on everything. I have locally hated. 100% locally hated. And that's us down at the Danger Room. And you can come and visit us uh, there. We got a fucking fabulous show. Mark Hughes is back. Uh, He is... Uh, he was a guest on the show there not too long ago, and he made a trek out east to Toronto, decided that it sucks ass out there, and has moved to Alberta, and he will be on that show. Myself, Sam Walker, and Brett Forte, like always, the weasel will be there. Ah, uh, yes. Then August 18th, 19th, we are in Prince George, British Columbia. August 20th, Smithers, BC. Tickets are on sale at dangercatchshop.com. Now, uh, a few topics we're going to talk about is parades. Parades be uh, in the news these days. Uh, they're, they're, they're all over the news. We're going to talk about those. A new show that I watched, uh, Snowflake Mountain, later in the show. Fan question, as always, to wrap it up. But first and foremost, as many of you may have seen, the many listeners, the millions and kajillions of listeners worldwide that listen to this show, right, that don't rate the show on iTunes and don't give a... Uh, a rating or, or a comment on it. What, what am I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but those that don't to boost the popularity of the show within iTunes ranking system. Hmm, weird that you don't do that to help me out, but to the thousands and thousands and thousands that do, uh, you may have seen that I was assaulted in a wrestling ring. Yeah, I was assaulted in a goddamn wrestling ring um, last week. And I got to say, top talent wrestling, I'm waging war on you. I am coming down upon you. I will rule with an iron goddamn fist over your organization after being assaulted inside your ring. It's a disgrace to wrestling. It's a disgrace to champions. That's how you treat champions. You 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 send your biggest mutant and fucking choke slam me through a table. That's what you do. That's what you think is how a champion should be celebrated in this city. Now I get it. Maybe I said some very vicious things to your audience. That's what I do. I'm the roast battle champion of Canada. That's right. East to West Coast, Atlantic to Pacific. This title is recognized and endorsed by the Rose Lord himself, Tony Hinchcliffe. And this is how you treat a champion. You you send a, a mutant who crawled out of what fucking, who knows what cave in the Rocky Mountains and dragged his knuckles all across the prairies just to throw me through a goddamn table? The hell is wrong with you people? You should be ashamed of yourselves that you would treat a champion in such ways. Is that what you do when somebody claims the tag team championships? Do you run and uh, find them in the grocery store and bust their head open with a steel chair? Is that what you do? When somebody claims your heavyweight title, do you find them out in a parking lot of the Home Depot and just swing a running lawnmower to cut their face to nothing smithereens? 
pieces of meat flying all over the parking lot? Is that what you do? <laughs> it's a disgrace. You should be ashamed of yourselves. In fact, I'm ashamed for you that you would even think of putting a hand on the Roast Battle Champion. I'm out here, I'm making people happy with what I do. Some people upset, like, like Alicia Snyder, when I beat her and took the title. That probably made her very upset. I'm sure that she still cries over the fact that she doesn't have 20 pounds of platinum wrapped in gold around her waist. I'd cry too. Because what has she got to live for? What's she doing now? <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody cares. All eyes are on the Roast Battle Champion. And I come into, the, in, into your venue <clears throat> to address matters, right? To address what I do as a champion in roast battles in Canada. Speaking of which, my next opponent, Dan Frazier, a ex-police officer from Calgary, Alberta. That should be entertaining. Tickets, tickets to that. I'm, always, I'm, I'm, Dr. I'm Johnny Promo on this podcast these days. <laughs> hey, tickets to my show. But I'm defending the title. First time I'm putting the title on the line against an ex-cop. Should be interesting. Do I have any appreciation for the law? No, none whatsoever. Now this guy's like doing some Tony Robbins type motivational speakings. <laughs> Should send him over to Top Talent Wrestling. Maybe they can grab a thought, a decent one to boot. Jesus, what a bunch of pigs in that audience. Oh, oh my God. I will say though, uh, indie wrestling is so much fun to go to. It is a riot in there. I had a blast. I was fucking having a blast in there. But yeah, I had to address that off the top. I did. Because uh, it's rather dissatisfying to know that this is how a champion is celebrated in the wrestling world. I didn't, uh, I, I've been a wrestling fan all my life. I am a massive Road Dog Jesse James and Sean uh, the Heartbreak Kid Michaels fan. Those two are. The best of the best. Sorry, I, 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 I got to get this computer not connected to my I, iCloud account because then the text messages pop up and then I get ooh, ooh, lizard brain over here starts reading the uh, mid-sentence. Something flashes in the corner, an old knuckle drag dragger over here. Whoa, what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> Just got back from the Saskatchewan tour as well. I talked a little bit about that, but wow, what a treat it is to hit the road with Sam and Brett and deliver devious jokes across the plains of Saskatchewan. That was a goddamn blast. I got to tell you, Sam Walker, we got to get him back on this podcast and dive into his brain. Uh, the moon landing is his new thing. He really, uh, he really ain't letting that one go. It's all fake. It's fugazi, as he would say. But yes, let's get into it. First topic. Now, parades... I don't know if you pay attention to the news or where you are located in the world, but where I'm located in the world, where I'm located in the world, parades are an issue, okay? A parade just happened over the weekend, and it's sweeping across the Canadian news networks, okay? It is, and it's uh, a lot of people are upset with, on what they've seen, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. The imagery that you're about to see that I'm about to show on this uh, screen behind me and what uh, you what I'm going to describe to the listeners, it, uh, it may be disturbing to you. It may upset you. It may drive you to the point of anger, frustration, uh, negative emotions will take over your body. And I understand that entirely. Uh, what these guy what this, what these guys did was... Some found it funny. I don't find it funny. I don't find it funny at all. But let's let's show the video. Okay? Let's let's roll the tape. Here we have That is incredible. Now what is being shown here is an old man in a diaper twerking at the Twin Cities Pride Parade. Disgusting. Just, you know, who let grandpa out? Now, you probably think that I'm about to go in uh, about 
gay rights and all that. But no, who didn't give their grandfather medication and now he's out in the streets attempting to twerk. He's got no ass to twerk, but he does have a gut on him. I will say that. And puffy nipples. I don't know what would cause that, but that is rather disturbing to know that this gentleman is deeply malnourished. And there, and some family members have allowed him to go waltz into the streets uh, with this just despicable behavior of twerking in work boots that look like they've never been worked in. It's sad to know that this is how we're treating our senior citizens now. And I know that this would probably deeply upset many. This is why I gave the forewarning before saying anything. But here we are. Here we sit right now watching this video. And I forced you to watch it with me. And this, this elder gentleman who clearly needs medical attention is out in the streets, disoriented, with his hands on his knees trying to twerk, trying to mimic what the uh, kids he watch on, watches on TikTok do. It's sad. It's sad that, uh, you know, for two years we did whatever we could to make sure that our senior citizens were taken care of, right? What do we do? We locked down to make sure we didn't kill Mima with a cough. And now we're just, we don't care anymore. And this is what they're doing. We, we've allowed them to take over the streets. They're flooding the streets, attempting these TikTok trends that the youth are doing. And, and Grandpa is clearly disoriented doesn't know where he's at. He thinks that they're celebrating him. Doesn't even know that he has doesn't have clothes on right now. Is he hammered from the night before of smoking cigarettes in the shed and drinking uh, tall glasses of whiskey by himself to suppress the past of forced marriage or shotgun marriage that his father made him do in 1943? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe Alzheimer's kicked in because they put lead in their uh, baby food when they were younger. It's not a stat. I don't know if that's true. But all I do know is we're failing as a society by allowing our senior citizens to walk out in public disoriented and not knowing what the hell they're doing. Now, many of you are probably upset that I'm talking about this, and I understand. And many of you who live in Canada know uh, I'm just fucking around right now, and the real thing I want to talk about is actually... Uh, what happened in Sundry, which is, now this might be controversial for me to say, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> I'll go on record and say, man, it's kind of funny. It is kind of funny. So we're going to, we're going to drag this on over and we'll preload this up. Uh, let this ad run out. Apparently that's all we have nowadays is ads. We just get ads all day long. But, uh, Yes, for those that don't know, in Sundry, there was a uh, uh, parade to kick off their rodeo in Sundry, Alberta. And what these g gentlemen did, okay, I won't ruin the surprise if you don't know what it is, but we will now get to our regular programming right here. This weekend, but it's not the Cowboys people are talking about. It's the parade that happened yesterday. One of the floats is getting a lot of attention, not just here, <laughs> but around the country, and not in a good way. With some people saying it was racist. Tyson Fedora oh. is in Sundry tonight. Tyson, oh no. what are people saying there? Thousands packed into the rodeo grounds here in Sundry on Sunday. At <laughs> Sundry on Sunday, Tyson Fedor, at Tyson Fedor on Twitter. We might have to check that out after. Jesus Christ, where, where, what fucking graduating program did they dig this asshole out of? Anyways. The pro rodeo continued. A lot of this guy is enunciating the shit out of his words. You know what? Give him a raise. He's really out here working hard in Sundry, Alberta, surrounded by these racists. These I am currently surrounded by racists and the rednecks out here in Sundry on a Sunday. A chatter about that parade float from Saturday depicting the Prime Minister and federal NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. Some <laughs> saying it was political satire, while others say it was done in poor taste. A bit stands are right full of Sundry's pro rodeo saw bucking horses and families soaking up the sun. But it was Saturday's parade that was the talk of the town. This float of two men caught the eye of many. 
One man was dressed as Prime Minister Justin Trudeau <laughs> driving a... Tr Hold on. He went full opposite here on us. The guy dressed up as Big Trudy has a... Who seems to be a little tanned, okay? I'm not assuming any race, but he seems to have a tan of some sort. And he goes full white face with the mask. The old bait and switch. The old Texas switcheroo they gave us. And then the other guy is just like... I don't know. It's it, it's kind of funny. that It's a poor attempt at, at a Sikh gentleman. He's got glasses. He actually looks like... Uh, I don't know. It looks like Toad from from uh, Mario Kart if he was to grow a beard in a way. Like, it doesn't look like a turban. It is kind of like... Okay, we'll comment on this after. Tractor pulling a manure spreader with a <laughs> Caucasian man dressed as NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. And send very dangerous message that it's, it's, it's okay to insult minorities and we are very disappointed and send them about this event. The float was dubbed the... Okay. I know that this is a wild time and probably not the correct thing to say, but this is a, always the time where when something like this happens, you know, uh, if it goes the other way, I would laugh regardless. If somebody did a float and they were making fun of, I don't know, who's somebody, uh, Vince Neil from Motley Crue. I really enjoy him. Uh, in his music. So if somebody did like a, a float where they were making fun of Motley Crue and him being fat, I'd still laugh at it. You know, I get it. Oh, it's racist. But if, uh, I guess it'd be like Dave Chappelle dressing up like a, a white reporter. I th still think that's funny. You know, well, doing white face is kind of funny right now. As a black person or anybody of color, I guess to say a BIPOC, am I saying that right? Anybody who does white face, you win me over, you know, I, uh, we need more of that, I think, but to like, I don't know, go to the extreme to say that these, these guys are like instilling hate. I think that the, you know, this is just, this is just small town humor. It was like a dumb joke that I don't know. It didn't land. And I'm all for going for the funny. They're trying to go for the funny here. They're not trying to instill like, hey, we want to recruit members of for the for the brotherhood. The Aryan nation needs a few more members. And we're out here today to put out the good word of Christianity and the Anglo uh, Saxon or whatever the fuck you want to call us. The Europeans, uh, we're pure Europeans and we need more members these days because it seems like minorities are starting to be become a little bit of the majority and we don't need that issue rising up. We need the pure white race to be instilled in society. This is just two like farmers. Uh, I, I don't know what they are. Two small town guys that... Uh, just trying to make a joke and we blow it out of proportion. This is that their way of like doing pol political satire in a way. And I know that this is in horrible taste. I get it. You can call me a bigot or a racist or whatever. I don't care, but it, it is kind of funny, you know, do the opposite. Have a Sikh guy dress up like, uh, Andrew Shear or Donald Trump or something. We'll still laugh at it. It's still funny. We just get so... Our panties get put up. And this is like a perfect opportunity, too, when, when uh, two jackasses decide to <laughs> try to do like some stupid joke that maybe lands, maybe doesn't land. And it, this is the perfect time for like self-hiding white people to like step up and be like, this is disgraceful. Look at how great I am. I have neighbors. And meanwhile, like, I imagine like a, a few brown dudes laughed at this and they're like yeah fuck that is kind of funny that is kind of funny there's a little bit of funny there liberal something parade organizers were liberal unaware had made its way into the parade I hate this guy's in a voice. statement the sundry pro rodeo says the parade is a celebration of community this entry was not approved and had joined without registering uh, i don't care what political platform it is uh it was racist oh this guy's got a t-shirt this is always good. This guy's got a t-shirt that says reverse warrior. But meanwhile, uh, the pig next to him has to do all the barking. This ants. This is disgraceful. And I don't think there's a place for that kind of... Why is she out in public when... 
COVID is rampant with no mask on. And we know, this is my tar- Tucker Carlson, and we know that the, bee, the obese community is under attack from COVID-19. It seems that as you're the more unhealthy that you are, the virus is able to take you out faster. Some locals feel the float was just a comedic spoof that should not cause offense. I'd say you're probably taking things too seriously. Um, I, I didn't see any banner on what it was promoting or anything, so I, I got it. It was just a joke. I saw more people laughing at it along the parade route, and it, it brought a chuckle uh, probably more than any other float. Calgary Sky- oh, yeah. Yep, there it is. Great job, CTV. Let's seek out the old guy in a cowboy hat that is, uh, I don't think he cares that much anymore. You know, his thoughts and opinions and like, oh, they're outdated. He needs to update his hard drive. He don't give a fuck. He's an old cowboy in the middle of nowhere at a fucking rodeo. And you want to like drag him into like some conversation about moral high grounds. And this guy's just like, fuck off. I'm here to watch like guys ride steers. Okay. I don't give a shit. It is kind of fucking fun. He makes a half decent point. He's like, they weren't really promoting anything. Yeah, it'd be different if it was like fucking skinheads of sundry. Rise up, brother. We got the skinheads of sundry. And of course, you like have to find the old cowboy to give give a statement. And they're like, yeah, I don't know. Who gives a fuck? That's all I Who gives a shit? Nobody cares. I don't give a shit. I'm broke. I'm broke. I don't fucking care. Do I look like I gave a shit? Do you think I'm going to sit here and make a I'm fucking die on this hill over two guys that were just trying to make a little joke, poke some fun? And yeah, maybe it was in poor taste. I said this once again. I uh, don't know. Whatever. Guy View Liberal MP George Shahal says oh, yeah. he was disturbed by the float. He says he plans on heading to Sundry to speak with locals about the negative message it sends to the Sikh community. It's unacceptable to see that type of behavior on display that people think it's okay uh, in Canada to target uh, our community. Tyson Fedor. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Any sort of controversy, there's always a politician lurking in the darkness trying to score a little bit of political points by propping himself up like he's a half-decent human being. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it wonderful that the moment that anything uh, pops up that possibly stirs the emotions of the general public there's always one of these weasels that pop out of the hole looking to win your vote shut the fuck up there's always one of them i think that i should head down to sundry and educate these people and no one shows up right no one shows up no one cares i'll tell you who shows up when that idiot rolls into town uh there'll be seven white women with signs Three members that he called from the the Sikh community that he that he prearranged that they wouldn't have known he was coming unless this fucking asshole called. The seven women knew he was coming because they follow him on Twitter and they announced that he he will be there to talk about what went down there. And the seven activists in the town that have nothing better to do are going to show up there and support in support. I support this guy. Meanwhile. This jackass ain't doing anything for the fucking public. He got elected in, and now this is what he's doing. He's doing a feel-good fucking parade for everybody. I'm going to parade around and try and make everybody feel good with my empty words that mean nothing. I imagine behind closed doors, uh, this asshole even laughed at it and be like, "Mm, all right, it's kind of funny. It's kind of stupid, but kind of funny. It is kind of funny that this idiot's in the back of a shit spreader pretending to shovel shit at people. Dressed up as Yagmeet Singh, or Jug Meat, as everybody says, right? For CTV News, Sundry. Now, the Sundry MLA and Finance Minister, Jason Nixon, was at the parade. He released a statement this afternoon yeah, saying, yeah. I strongly condemn... See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the perfect opportunity for any time uh, for every politician in the area to prop themselves off. I condemn this! 
this is exactly what we don't need in the community. And then it's like some fucking nerd that is uh, never going to do anything for you anyways. So you might as well have a little fun. You might as well go stir up a little shit. Because there's always a, I strongly condemn the racist float that appeared at the sundry par- parade. Discrimination and racism is no place in sundry or anywhere in Alberta. This is Canadian racism too, by the way. You know, like that's the funny part. Like, this is going to be a bumpy road, but we're going to try and land this plane as best as we possibly can with my words here. Okay, like Canadian racism is kind is kind of funny, isn't it? It's like, yeah, this is like, this is what explodes people's heads. Meanwhile, you know, you go into the underbelly of America, and and there's full on neo Nazi gangs. Right there's full on like hate groups that that are uh, forming militias or whatever it may be. There's gang culture that is like rampant, but up here, two idiots just drove a tractor, and this is fucking put the whole country to a halt. You know, this is like our this is our nine eleven. Okay, this is our nine eleven. Because there was, there's two, there was two towers, right? We don't talk about the third building that went down, but there's two ta- two towers representing two people dressed up as two politicians, and it's it stopped us in our tracks to really take time and self reflect. I know it's been a long two years, and we've been locked inside, and we don't know how to act while we're in public anymore, and we strongly condemn this behavior. But meanwhile, what I don't strongly condemn as bending you over, right? No lube. I rip your pants down and I fuck you with the T in tax because I'm able to grab it and I just viciously fuck your ass and I want your asshole get ripped to shreds. I'm running this thing like it's a goddamn handsaw in and out of your ass until every last penny in your pocket is jingled out and scattered amongst the streets and me and my other rat politicians come and dive on those dollars and cents until you are physically, mentally, and financially broken. Then, that's when the real madness starts. But until then... I'm going to put on this little mask that makes you believe that I give a shit that two jackasses drove a tractor and placed another one in the box or in the shit spreader that he's driving around and went into a parade for a rodeo. That I care deeply what these two gentlemen got up to because I'm supposed to pretend to care like this asshole gives a shit. You think that you think that this crosses his mind while he's laying there looking at the roof of his fucking house that you uh, you paid for as a taxpayer because you're paying his wage, right? I imagine his wage translates into his mortgage. So you know he's a he's a uh, an employee of the public public. He's in the public sector. So he's got to pretend to give a shit about the public. It's all a, a big game. It's all interesting. Jason Nixon. The racist float that appeared. Discrimination and racism have no place in Sundry or anywhere in Alberta. He goes on to say, I've been assured by parade organizers that the float was not approved and that they're putting measures into place to ensure this doesn't happen again in the future. Oh, wow. Good for them. Some of the tweets were funny about this. Oh, that's it. There's no uh, write-up about it. Wow. Wow. Really, really going for it, CTV. You really went for it. You got there. See? Now, my take on it is maybe it's time we stop with the parades. Maybe it's time we stop with the parades. Because we had a a delusional old man in the beginning running around in his underwear pretending to twerk like the kids on TikTok. And then we got guys dressed up as politicians attempting to make a joke and this is too much it's gone too far and what happened guys can't dress up anymore huh maybe they didn't get the memo that costumes aren't in anymore wow didn't know that costumes banned banned no more costumes do you understand me no more costumes gentlemen every every 
little party where you think you're, you're going to dress up, cancel. Done. Don't even think about it. No more costumes. Time for a little ad read. DangerCatShop.com to get all of your Danger Cats merchandise, hats, hoodies, t-shirts, uh, all on there. Use the code PODCAST69 and get 15% off your order today. Also, uh, we have shows coming up. If you head to DangerCatShop.com, July 1st, the Danger Room in Calgary, Alberta will be going down. Uh, it is a safe space, safe, safe space for dangerous ideas. Myself, Sam Walker, Brett Forte will be there. And, uh, Mark Hughes will be making a return to the danger room. He was our first headliner to ever do it in almost a year to date where we started this show. He is back. He is back. Back in black. So dangercatshop.com. Use the promo code podcast 69 for all your merchandise orders off this podcast. Patreon.com slash DangerCat69. Extra episodes of the Uncle Hack podcast now available. Plus, there is uh, the full uncensored version of me getting choke slammed through that table on there. All my roasts, everything that I've said at that show was recorded, and we now have it live on our Patreon because, uh, well, we went hard at that audience. We went extra hard at them, which uh, earned me a uh, lovely ride through a fucking table. All right? So if you want to watch that, it's on there. Plus, uh, all existing roast battles are available on our Patreon, patreon.com slash DangerCats69, plus an extra episode of the Uncle Hack podcast. Every week when this episode drops, there's an extra episode waiting for you. Anyways, back to the episode. If you fellas can't get together and put a, put together a little costume, you know what? You can't drink the night before uh, with, with Prozac. And forget to take your medication in the morning to try and perk you up, you know? Next thing you know, you might accidentally dress up as Yagmeet Singh and be in the box of a fucking, sh in the box of a shit spreader behind a John Deere tractor pretending to scoop shit at the people. Or, or you could be in the Twin Cities, stranded in the middle of the public in your underwear, pretending to twerk at people, not knowing where the hell you are because your grandson didn't show up to take you down to the diner for a black coffee, a piece of blueberry pie, and to read the Sunday paper. The next thing you know, you're, you're a walking mockery of uh, the whole goddamn town. <laughs> Tough living out there. This is, this is also fun. Um, oh, hold on. This is also fun. I watched this on the weekend. Uh, I watched one episode of it. It's called Snowflake Mountain. I don't know if any of you have seen this on your uh, Netflix, but I've seen this and I figured I'd give it a go. It's kind of interesting. You know, what makes me laugh is uh, there's nothing that we love bitching more about. Uh, listen, rural, whatever you want to call it, country boys, rednecks, hillbillies, whatever. We all love just taking shots at snowflakes. Oh, what's the matter, snowflake? You can't take a joke. Oh, you don't know hard work. Listen, I, I, A for one, I can, I can take a joke. You can make, I make fun of me better than you'll ever make fun of me. And if you make fun of me better than I can make fun of me, I'm going to take your joke and I'm going to use it. Because that's, uh, I stole that from Brett Forte. And I make cash off of it. Pop goes the weasel. But <clears throat> there's a show called Snowflake Mountain where these two uh, backwoods boys kind of take these millennial dipshits and try and mold them into, you know, outstanding citizens. Now, I only got one episode in because I can only handle so much of that valley girl uh, overusing slang language on top of, like, people that are fascinated with material shit, you know? Anybody that's like, well, this is a Fendi bag. I don't even know what the fuck Fendi is. What does that mean, right? But, uh... I'm going to play the trailer, which is kind of interesting. This might be a fun watch for you. Uh, but it, listen, it is hilarious watching two guys that don't give a shit try and listen to the problems that these little twerps have. They were drug out of like cities all across the world, uh, UK. And it's just like lazy, dumb, kind of. 
I, the, the, the types of people that think clubbing is cool, right? They think clubbing's cool. And they take them out to the middle of nowhere. The funniest part of the one episode that I watched is like, okay, hey, you got to go and get your own food today. And all they did was like they gathered the food and they put it on a floating raft in the middle of a lake and made them swim out there and get it. And then the other group, uh, all they did was like tie the food up in the tree and obviously it's like fabricated for television to make it look like these kids are dumber than they actually are. Unless they are that stupid. Today, these days, you can never tell what's real and what's fake. So it makes it more fun to watch. But it, the way it's set up, it makes it seem like it's believable that these idiots can't figure out how to physically swim to not even the middle of the lake. I want to say like this is 150 feet offshore and they just have to retrieve the food and bring it back. And it's like cookies and little things like bananas and apples. And none of these assholes know how to cook. It's actually like kind of pathetic. <laughs> now that I think about it, it's overly pathetic. But anyways, we'll watch the trailer together and listen to it. I need my foundation. I need my lip gloss. I need my highlight and my contour. Now, the woman that's speaking here is in a snakeskin what I think bodysuit and her fat tits are spilling out of it uh, probably has the body mass of what I would say um, ooh, similar to a blue whale. Uh, very obese is what I'm saying. Very fat. I have something against fat people lately. They annoy me. I'm tired of this... Uh, this this body shaming bullshit. You're a pig. Go walk. Burn some calories. I need my highlight, my contour. You know, this is these are the type of people that that we're uh, we're gonna be listening to for the next two minutes and ten seconds. Probably pausing in between too. Snowflake, a young person who's considered overly emotional. <laughs> Easily offended. Fuck you guys. This is not okay. And dramatic. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. There's a heap of young adults who can't even unload a dishwasher, let alone hold down a job. And these 10 Snowflakes families have reached their breaking point. So they've tricked their giant babies into traveling far, far away to make them grow oh, the hell up. Ho! Oh, pigs in the wild. <laughs> bunch of pigs in the wild. There's a few of them that look like decently in shape, but the rest of them are just fat, disgusting, grotesque humans. Very, very disturbing. You know, my mom was very adamant that I was always playing in sports or involved in something physically. I also, we were not rich enough to just allow me to lay on the couch. So I had to, that's the thing about, uh, I would say we lived in poverty, but we weren't like, uh, we weren't suburbs rich. We were more like just above lower class, but not quite middle class. You know, right in the bubble, you know. I was still able to play things like hockey and, uh, you know, with the assistance of other people's income. Uh, it made it possible that I could uh, still participate in these activities. And my mom made sure that she was adamant that I didn't get fat. She doesn't like fat people either. I don't like them either. You know, they annoy me. They annoy me. Anybody that can sit there and, and say that you're body shaming me, you've body shamed yourself. You've shamed your body by not uh, <laughs> exercising and getting your fat ass out there. Fat people. Bleh. Where the hell are we? I feel like I'm on a fucking oh, pilgrimage. You, you sound like you're from Harry Potter. And that's where we come in. I'm Joel. This is my buddy Matt. I was an Army combat engineer for almost 10 years. I'm former Navy explosive ordnance disposal. It's basically the bomb squad. Think Hurt Locker. Now, me and Matt, who survived off the land our whole lives, are going to take these kids back to basics. Nice. It's always good when they bring in, like, someone ex-military to give these kids a little bit of an, uh, an awakening. Because these guys were, like, they're from, you know, they look about just slightly older than me. So I'm pegging them at probably about 35-ish, 36. 
with combat experience. So they've been through the worst of the worst. And then these idiots think that it's awful that they don't have cell service and can't make TikToks uh, denouncing body dysmorphia or whatever the fuck, whatever gender they are that day. So it's, it's great to see, you know, and, and it's always uh, these guys... I appreciate these types of gentlemen. You know, first off, they're combat vet veterans. So, hey, we love our troops around here. Secondly, they don't take no shit. They don't care. They've had a drill sergeant, sergeant call him a faggot for, for two years of their life. Hey, drop down. Give me 20 faggot. Okay. Yeah, whatever. I don't give a shit anymore. I'm going to go over and get blown up in uh, Afghanistan. So, whatever. The word faggot doesn't really... Uh, Hurt my feelings. Hurry up! Ah! Why? Because the wilderness forces you to toughen up. Feels borderline abusive. <laughs> Camping's abusive. There's nothing I hate more than waking up in the morning and knowing that I have to possibly start my own fire to cook the food that it, that may, that I don't know how to cook. First off, anything that I can't just eat out of a box like graham crackers, cereal, uh, oh, granola bars, it makes it awfully difficult. And I think that this is a form of abuse. Abuse is getting, the word abuse is getting thrown around way too loosely these days. You know, some poor kid probably in the slums of Mississippi that's getting cigarettes put out by him, uh, put out on him by his mother because for some reason she finds that the kid's just a burden on her financial fucking status, you know? Jesus Christ, you came home, made all the no-name brand Cheerios again, you little son of a bitch. Come over here, it's time, discipline time. I'm going to put out a fucking American spirit right on your forehead. So that way it'll remind you that we only have one cup a day of the no-name brand Cheerios that mama got down at the fucking Walmart. I went down to the Walmarts and got ourselves some granola bars because they were on sales. You little dumb son of a bitch. This guy's uh, form of abuse, I guess, is camping. It's abusive. Are they going to rise to the challenge? <laughs> You're an animal. Just so you know, I just shit in a paint bucket. Or are they going to do what they do best? I'm not doing that. No way, no way. Melt down. I can see it now. I'm going to get a rash, a pussy rash. Listen, you pig. Your thighs rubbing together probably is what caused the Fort Mac fires. <laughs> wow. Disgusting. I'm going to get a rash, a pussy rash. Listen, you haven't seen the folds of your pussy since you weighed 110 pounds. Let's not act like you're down there sifting around. You need to put a mirror on the floor and spread eagle standing above it and then have the other one reflect down on it so that way you can see down into the deep hole of what you call your gash. Okay? Disgusting. Disgusting. It's not be I'm feeling evil today. I'm sorry. I keep pausing this. I'm feeling evil today. I don't know what it is about fat people lately, but it's just irritating me. Maybe because I'm gaining a few pounds myself, but we're roast battle champion. We say what we want. We do what we want. This is why we, uh, we're not allowed in certain comedy clubs across Canada. It's because we voice our opinions on a podcast, and all it takes is somebody who dislikes us to send the podcast to those exact people that run the comedy club, and then we aren't inclusive enough to go over there. So it's a little bit my fault. I'll admit guilt. I'll admit... Uh, that maybe the things that I say and do aren't necessarily deemed appropriate, but that's okay because we got you, the listener. We don't know if they can do it. I just can't do it. Because I'm vegan. Oh, there it is. I can't do it because I'm vegan. Well, lucky for you, you're in the wilderness. Look around. There's plants everywhere. You can kneel down and start eating the grass that the same cows that you want to save eat themselves. Isn't that beautiful? Now, all those years of you projecting that you're a wonderful human, you get to pretend to be the animal that you ever so care to save. Oh, this show just keeps getting better. I should dive into episode two. I only got halfway through episode one until the point where they uh, were like scheming not to give the snacks to the other fat kids, which is kind of funny. They're all like gathered. Uh, 
the one crew that swam out to the middle of the lake, they get they got their food and they're like, look what we got. And then uh, the other crew was like scheming. Well, one guy was, and he's like, let's not get all the good treats. And there was like chocolate chips and all the ingredients to make s'mores. Yes, this is the food that they strung up in a tree and made these dumbasses retrieve out of there as it's just like hanging dangling uh, probably five feet above their fingertips. And all they had to do was untie a rope and voila, you got it. Wow, what a challenge. And these idiots then uh, gather all the food. They're going through it and there's chocolate chips and uh, marshmallows and graham crackers and a few other like off snacks. And the one guy's like, we should make sure not to tell these guys about it. We don't want them knowing about the treats that we're about to retrieve. And bring back down there all the fatties. They're going to want to eat the chocolates. And we should keep the chocolates to ourselves. It's just a fat, it's, it's fat camp. And then they, they found the, the little uh, Easter egg up in the tree. Might cry. I just don't know if carry it on would be the right thing. They might die. Ah, fuck my life! <laughs> ah! We're actually nice guys. <laughs> no, you're not. Oh my God. There's nothing more like annoying is watching anybody over the age of like, I would say 16 cry like a toddler. Oh my God. This is fucking, it annoys that maybe I just don't have a soul. Maybe I'm an asshole, but you know, it's like that, that whiny crying. I just can't do this anymore. You guys are mean to me. And you're just like, ugh. I thought I didn't have to deal with this anymore. Maybe I got no feel, no emotion, no empathy left in me. Actually, that's not true because I watch uh, those videos of soldiers coming home and I, and I get a little choked up. That's probably what they're, they, that's probably like them. After they got back from the wilderness, uh, their parents had one of those, like they snuck home and made it seem like they just got, they, they came back from a combat and their parents are like, oh, my God, you lasted two days in the bush, honey. I can't believe it. This is this is our Vietnam. This is our Afghanistan. Our baby girl made it two days out in the wilderness making s'mores with other fat pigs. I can't believe it. Oh, God, did you learn anything? Well, uh, no. <laughs> oh, Jesus, but at least you accomplished the challenge. We're so proud of you. There it is. Yes, I highly recommend uh, checking that out. It's uh, it's a it's quite the funny watch. I am I'm only one episode in. Keep in mind, so it, like uh, it is, it is something. Oh, let's. Oh, sorry, that's just the link there. I'm just bringing this up. Bam. We'll get into the fan question very shortly. There we go. Um. Here, yeah, let's 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 do the fan question. Let's do the fan question. All right, here it is. We're gonna end the show on this, ladies and gentlemen. Your fan question. If you have a fan question, must I remind you? Please send me an email with the subject line "fan question." Huh? To Uncle Hack at DangerCats.tv. That's my email that you can reach me at. Also, you can DM me on Instagram if that's easier for you. You can leave a voice note or uh, uh, you can type it out. Do whatever the hell you want. Uncle Hack 69 U N C L E H A C K 69 on Instagram. And that's the two ways that you can send something in for the fan question by email or by uh, DM on Instagram. Anyways, let's get into this one. All right. Hey, Uncle Hack, I need some advice. So I'm a 22 year old from Wisconsin. If you need a handle, uh, Adam had him. Okay, Adam. Anyways, so I've been in quotations dating this solid six and a half for about two months now. Now I started dating her about two, about a two year dry streak of no women and better yet, no fucking. The issue lies where my last girl was a 9.6. No shit. Therefore, okay, well, why is she gone? Therefore, I'm used to the more higher quality women. <laughs> we'll be touching on that. 
Me and my current lady have been sexually active. However, I'm still unsatisfied with the sense that she's just not my type. Do you recommend that I keep her around until I find something new or just cut ties to, with her to familiar, familiarize you uh, with my situation? It's clear she likes me a lot more than I like her. Also, we're both in college and currently I have the same summer class together. There's about another month and a half of that. If we separate prior to that class ending, both of our grades will suffer because we take the quizzes together online and cheat. Anyways, love your podcast. Keep up the roast battles. Thank you very much. And thank you for the fan question. First off, let's go back up. And he says, higher quality women. Okay, so you're basing you're basing higher quality women off of looks, and you say that your last girlfriend's a nine point six. No bullshit. Okay, I'm gonna go with that is bullshit. Okay, because uh, if if that's the higher quality woman that uh, you are you're after, why is she not around? So first, you're an idiot. Secondly, me and my current lady have been sexually active. Oh, that's great. A two-year dry streak of no women and better yet, no fucking. <laughs> Do you recommend that I keep her until I find something new or just cut ties to Okay, first off, uh, I'm going to quote the great Patrice O'Neill. See, what you want, you always want your lady liking you more than you like her, okay? That just makes for a great relationship because then uh, there's this... First, okay... I'll rewind for a second here. When you're the one chasing and uh, the hunt is on, it's always fun, right? You're always hunting. What do you hunt for? Pussy, right? Most guys are always like, that's their kill, okay? And ladies, uh, and I'm generalizing here, for the most part, you know, it's like relationships, but this new wave that's happening of this online hookup culture and online dating and uh, the capabilities of reaching people that you would never be able to reach back in the day. Like when your mom was uh, in her teenage years, they probably always had, they probably had pictures of fuck. I don't know. Uh, David Hasselhoff in the room or whatever fucking celebrity at the time in the eighties gave them a lady boner and the odds of them possibly fucking them or meeting them are very slim where nowadays, if you're a hot lady there's a good chance that athletes, musicians, celebrities can reach out to you on Instagram, fly you out to Dubai and face fuck you until you, I don't know, until your tonsils fall out. And th that's just the era that we live in. Okay. So now it's like changed the game a little bit. It's a little bit weird. I'm, I'm out of the game. I'm out of the dating game. In fact, like I'm not even good at DMing girls. I don't, I don't do that. Right. I'm also in a relationship. If you know my relationship, it's a bit different than others, but I don't abuse the fact that I can fuck other women. Uh, do I do it? Every now and then. But I'm not like, I don't know. I've, 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 I've like rationalized in my head that it's probably not beneficial just to go out searching for pussy every weekend. It's not. It's time waste. Okay? It is. It's a time waste. And right now what you're doing is you're just like hanging on to something because you're you're getting something out of this, right? You both have the same summer class together. So you're really not into this relationship anyways. She's really into you, which is a good thing, which is a good thing because then you get the sense of feeling wanted and she wants to have you around and it's a lot of fun. And for her right now, she's chasing you. You already got pussy. So your hunt is over. Her hunt now is to try and lock you down, keep you around, you know? Have a relationship and see where things go. Where you seem to be checked out already, but this is a good thing because you don't know what you got till it's gone. And then once she's gone, you realize like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, we always have this thing in our head too as guys that there's always something better. The grass is always greener on the other side, right? And sometimes it is. In most cases it isn't. I don't know if you went out there, you seen like the very vocal women, but they're pretty fucking dumb now, right? There's always like 19 red flags that you got to get through. There's like every dating experience that they have fucking sucks. And even though they suck as a human being, it's just like both sides are fucking twisted now. The internet has caused not only people to be dumber, but more opinionated and wanting to express themselves on every th little speed bump in their road. I don't care to really tell 
much of my personal life, I guess. The fun things I like to talk about and the funny things. But every little problem that I have, I don't go online. If somebody called me a cunt, I'm not out there. Ah, what the fuck? This guy, this guy did this to me. We need to dox him and go after him. And I don't try to send followers after people because it's retarded in my mind. I think it's like, it's, it's, it's really stupid to prop up like this whole age of this, this, this age of internet has got us all twisted on like uh, the idea of perfect. And I don't know. It's, it's like rather difficult for you young guys. Now it's harder than ever for you young guys. Cause now you're, you've now been pulled in before. Like even when I was coming up in the game, you had to like physically meet somebody or stumble across their Nexopia page. And that was our fucking days of like DMing somebody, right? You would just like sling a DM and pray to God on, uh, and, and you'd have to be on the debt uh, on, uh, on, on, on your fucking home computer. So you didn't have a computer just in your pocket. You were like physically in the world. And if you went to parties, you were hoping to God that, Hey, I hope, I hope, uh, I don't know. I'm going to make up a name. I hope Sandra brings her friends from the city that are coming down and maybe there'll be a new girl and I'll have an opportunity to talk to her and maybe we hit it off and these start to, 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 cultivate into, you know, much more. Maybe I get some pussy, you know, it, 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 you just had to dream where now it's all in the palm of your hand and you're competing with like very wealthy, very athletic, very popular men that are 10 times the dudes that you'll ever be. So to like have this and to think that, uh, you know, something is greener on the other, uh, she's a six and a half, but we're constantly fucking, you were in a two year dry streak of no women and better yet, no fucking. So I think it's possible, uh, possibly time to like look in the mirror and, and start to realize like, yeah, maybe, you know, every guy that goes fishing pulls out a big fish every now and then, and maybe you hit a home run with the 9.6, but now it's time to like really take a hard look in the mirror and uh, question what you, I'm used to more high quality, higher quality women. Okay. Yeah. What the one lady, the last girl, the last girl, your last girl. And how many of those prior to that were 9.6s? Me and my current lady have been sexually active and I, and I'm still unsatisfied with the sense that she's just not, well, what is your type? Then why are you with her? Quit wasting her time. You guys just fucking waste people's time. That's all you do. Fuck off with that. Let the girl go then. Let her go have fun. You're wasting the best years of her life at college. She could be getting dicked down by the volleyball team, but here you are putting her on a false rope of security. Wow. That or uh, the dude side of me is telling me this. I'd say ride out the month of that month and a half and uh, get through these courses or whatever the fuck you're doing. These quizzes. You got you got constant pussy that or you got to be honest. This is this. Is, see that the, the, the dude side is it's just like be honest. Be like, hey, why don't we just fuck and get through these courses? With no, like, strings attached. I don't care if you sleep with other dudes. And as long as you don't care if I sleep with other women, who cares? As long as you just say that outright. So what? The road might be a little bumpier after that. Buckle up, son. It doesn't get easier. Welcome to the real world where you have to address your problems instead of bury them. You know? Bring it up. Just be like, hey, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really, look. I, I know this has been fun. I'm not really into it. I don't know why. Maybe they, whatever reason is inside your fucking skull that, that, you know, you're used to higher quality women. What the ones that pump their lips up and get and suck off fucking drug dealers and uh, the, the, the in, inside of dance club bathrooms and handicap stalls. Oh, look, she's got a Prada dress that her ex boyfriend that was a Coke dealer bought her. She's a higher quality woman. A 9.6. Kiss my ass a 9.6. Where in Kansas? You fucking idiot. Two, this guy's coming off a two-year dry streak of no women, and he's fucking... Well, my last girl was a 9.6. Listen. <laughs> yeah? I scored a hat trick in midget hockey, okay? Do you want me to bring that up? Do you want me to talk about the ha my first hat trick I scored in Adam A. Hockey? Do you want to talk about that? 
No one gives a fuck about the last game you won. It's about the next one. Daddy over here trying to praise the good old days. Meanwhile, he goes on a two-year dry streak. He fucking zero at bats, and he's still talking about the home run he hit in fucking 2019. Give it a rest. <laughs> it's actually not a bad reference, I guess. Now, this is the part where I got to I gotta dissect what I'm trying to tell you and give you the advice that uh, young men seek off of this show. All right? Now, I, I, I'm a 31-year-old guy. I've, I wouldn't say I've, like, I haven't fucked a ton of women, but I, I, I've put a good dent. Uh, comfortable enough that I could be like, eh, yeah, okay. A, I, I, I don't know what my number is. I don't keep track. But as a young guy, okay, here's what I'm noticing with, with uh, the younger gents out there is you're all fascinated with the idea that you're going to find the perfect woman right out of the gate. Yeah, but it, it also takes effort on your behalf. You know, you see these people that are like happy with one another. It just didn't happen. You know, they worked on that shit, especially the ones that make it last. Okay. The honeymoon stage is always a, a good time. It's always a good time because you're spending time getting to know one another. You're, you're intrigued with their interests. You want to be out in public. You want to go places with one another. The excitement is on the rise. You're exploring new things. You're fucking at it at an all time high. It's fun. It's great to figure out, you know, you're the, the, the person that either A, you put a dick inside or you let put a dick inside you. It's always interesting. It's a lot of fun. Honestly, like, yeah, it is a lot of fun. Hookup culture, eh, it's, it's okay. But like eh, going on a date and getting to know somebody, going out, having a good time, being interesting, meeting interesting people is always fun, right? And then once you click and you're diving into it a little bit more, you're you're trying to figure out their interests and where you line up with that, what music you like, what do you like doing, what's your hobbies, uh, what shows do you enjoy watching, you know? What, uh, what comedy special did you watch last? Uh, there's a million questions that get brought up. As long as you're not a boring individual that is full of themselves, it's probably pretty easy to date in, in, in these times. You just don't got to be like a fucking weirdo. All the, like most of these bad dates that I hear too. Now, I don't think that all of them went that way. It's, people like to blow things out of proportions, i.e. like myself, for the sake of possibly getting more clicks. I get that. I do that. I want that. Because I need to sell tickets to the shows uh, that, that I promote that you can buy tickets at at DangerCatShop.com, right? So I get that, that, that uh, everybody wants to be in the limelight and get their 15 minutes of fame. And mine's probably been expired for about three years now, <laughs> if I'm being honest. That's an old jug of milk that you refuse to take out of the fridge and it's just sitting there and you're like, I, I know if I move it, it's just probably going to cause more stink. I'll just leave it there. Let it, let somebody else deal with the problem. But as far as this little situation goes, to familiar, she it's clear she likes me a lot more than I like her. And why is that? What is it about you? Is it because you're used to higher quality women and now she's put herself in the category of higher quality women because she's with you, your majesty? Is that what it is? Get off your fucking high horse. You know, uh, do you recommend that I keep her around until I find something new or do I just cut ties with her? I just be honest, okay? I'll get to the, this is your question. I'll answer that question. No, I don't recommend that you just keep her around until you find someone new because that sucks. I've been that guy. I've been the guy that's done it and had it happen to me and it sucks when it happens to you. This is like, oh, fuck, this person just kept me around until they found something new. Fuck, do I suck. Oh, God, that doesn't feel good. Boy, oh, boy, do I feel like a fucking Fugazi right now. A fucking Munyak Shavaz. So if I'm you in this situation, I would sit her down and just politely tell her, look, I don't know where this is going. I don't know what you expect. We haven't laid any, like, ground rules. This probably just organically happened. We're having a good time. 
I'd like to continue to have a good time, but I don't want expectations or put titles on stuff. If you find somebody, I highly recommend going on that date. You can tell me about that date. I would like to continue to study with you and possibly fuck. That's all my expectations are right now as a young man. But then there's that time that comes around that if you meet somebody and then probably, you know what'll happen? If you keep her around, this is what's going to happen, okay? Is you're going to meet somebody. You're going to think that that person is better than the person that you're with. In a classic, you know, you don't know what you got until it's gone. I said it already. You're going to then, it. listen, this happened to me a while ago, actually. I'll use my own personal experiences. So I was like, I was kind of, you know, I was in a similar situation. I'll use my personal experience. And uh, this is exactly what happened, okay? It was in my little fuck boy phase when I was like 25. So this is like six years, six, six seven years ago, 24, 25. I was hanging out with this girl, super cool chick, like easily like compatible with me. I was in a similar situation where I, I believe that she liked me more than I liked her. And uh, we just had fun together, fucked and did things together. Uh, went to the gym and, and like stupid little things like that. She was a phenomenal human being. I've got zero bad words to say about her. Um, and then I came and met a different woman and I thought that this woman was 10 times better and I was chasing this girl. So I'm chasing the carrot now. And then I got somebody chasing my carrot, right? So it's just a little game going on here and it's not helping anybody. In fact, it's just hurting. Um, and my dumb ass, right? My dumb ass starts pursuing the carrot more like, oh, this is going to be great. And then there was a little bump in the road. Like I, I just bought my place and uh, fucking, I can't remember what it was. It's all over movie tickets. I got invited to a movie and I, uh, with her. And then uh, I thought that she said she was going to buy the movie tickets. And then I just kind of stood there uh fucking waiting and then she got mad over me over movie tickets right like this is like a 40 dollar purchase and then it was like oh yeah well you probably got no fucking money and i was just getting an ass chewing she refused to talk to me after the movie that we went to with her friend and her boyfriend and uh this is like the second time that we went out and i'm meeting friends and all this shit right and uh refused to talk to me afterwards. And this was after I cut ties with the first one. And then it was a classic, this bitch got mad at me over some horse shit. And then, uh, uh, what the hell happened? And then she just basically told me to kick rocks over this whole movie experience. And she's like, you didn't hold my hand like that. It's like, bitch, we've known each other for fuck less than 18 hours. And you want me to go full boyfriend mode on you, right? And I don't, I, hey, maybe I, I take things a little slower. And she just went ballistic. And then I, after I cut ties with the one lady, and then I was pursuing this one, then I'm left there stranded like an idiot. In the meantime, I had like the, a great person. So I, I'm just telling you what I went through. But if you really think that uh, you're not into this, cut ties. Don't be a cunt. There's enough cunts out there. I, I'm a cunt with my words. And I don't... Uh, I try not to treat people uh, in a disrespectful manner anymore when it comes to, like, relationships. I try to be as open and honest as possible because I was such a piece of shit back in the day. I was garbage, human garbage when it came to relationships, cheating, lying, fuck it. I never stole from, though, I never stole from girlfriends. That, that to me was like too far. Lying and cheating was already enough. I didn't need to hat trick this one. So it was like, ah, yeah, you know, you're out there fucking randoms and acting like a fucking dipshit. And so now I just, I, I try to make sure that I'm open and honest as possible, as much as I can. And I really question every time that I'm, I'm being dishonest. So I'm trying to hold myself accountable for all this dumb shit that I get up to, right? And uh, I don't know. I, 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 I definitely tend to try to be as, as best as I possibly can when it comes to being 
a honest human. So if you're not into it, dude, you got to be honest about this shit and fucking break it off. That poor girl's going to have her heart broken and it's going to be awkward. You know, one of the worst breakups I've ever had was like where neither of us were fighting and it was just like, it was time to separate. And it was like, that one's, I would much rather argue, fight, scream at one another. So that way you have a reason to dislike that person where this one, I had no reason to dislike them and that hurt more. I wanted to hate them, but I couldn't sucked so this one's going to be difficult especially if you have like a, a somewhat civil conversation about it and both of you have an understanding of of one another so i mean like hats off to you i wish you the best i wish you the best and uh i hope that clears up some smoke in the air for you pal and uh quit telling yourself that 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 you're the you're used to higher quality women okay you're an idiot for thinking that. Anyways, thank you for listening to the Uncle Hack Podcast. We will see you next week, Thursday at 3 p.m. For those that are on the Patreon, uh, please be patient with me. I am currently moving houses. I'm moving all this studio shit this week. I, I slipped in and was able to sneak off an episode here. So an extra episode will be out. I'll, I'll put two out next week. Uh, for extra episodes just due to the fact that I'm going to be moving some stuff out of here and into uh, my new place and putting together a little studio so that way I'm able to work from home now and, and, and instead of uh, driving down to an office building. Um, so I just ask that you be patient with me and I will get that extra episode out for you. And thank you for listening to the Uncle Egg Podcast.